How much is art worth? That's a question a lot of people ask at some point. Academics ask it, artists ask it, and discussion ranges from trying to find a physical value to treating the whole thing as a philosophical thought experiment. But is there an actual answer to the age-old question, how much is art worth? Well, sort of. The problem with answering the question, how much is art worth, is it's a bad question. The reason it's a bad question is because there are two variables in the question itself we need to define before we have any chance of knowing where we need to look. We need to define the words art and worth. Let's start with the first one. Art. What is art? Well, painting. That's art. I've seen paintings in art galleries, so they're definitely art. Sculptures, too. They've got to be art. I'm sure I've heard some very highly educated people say films and TV shows are art, so let's throw them in there, too. What else? Oh, books. They're art. And music, songs, hymns, and even festive rituals. All of them are art. But what about the less tangible things? What about people or places? Can a person be a work of art? Can a location be a work of art? If I stand on the beach and stare into the endless ocean, is that art? What if someone makes a sandcastle near me and I stare at that instead? Is that art? Am I art? The food I'm eating, is that art? If I'm watching a DVD, is the film itself more art than the DVD box? Which art is better? Now I'm thinking about it, how can I possibly define the word art? Surely this should be an easy question to answer. Art is a word and therefore should have a dictionary definition. And a quick Google search reveals that art is, according to the Oxford English Dictionary, the expression or application of human creative skill and imagination, typically in a visual form such as painting or sculpture, producing works to be appreciated primarily for their beauty or emotional power. Fantastic, that was easy. We now know exactly what art is. Except not really. A quick Google search for what is art throws up 7,830,000,000 results, so maybe we're not that close to an agreed-upon answer yet. Even the extremely liberal answer I'm about to give isn't accepted by everyone, and no one answer ever will be. But for the purpose of this video, I'm going to explain, and then use, my own interpretation. What art is and isn't has been debated for centuries. Plato described art as the imitation of nature, and he was pretty clever, so maybe we should just let him answer it and then stop asking. However, the Mental Floss website quotes a dictionary from the 1300s which describes art as the display and application of skill. The word skill here implies that not everyone can create art, but only those with a degree of technical proficiency, through training or natural talent. Does that mean a child's finger painting isn't art, just because it took no skill? Marc Chagall, a French-Russian artist, described art as the unceasing effort to compete with the beauty of flowers and never succeeding. Never succeeding? Well, what if an individual doesn't like flowers, but does like, say, the dark night? Surely to that person, the best Batman film ever made is more art than the flowers they so strangely hate. George O'Keefe says art is filling a space in a beautiful way. The word filling implies the addition of stuff to the space that wasn't there before, but does that mean removing stuff isn't art? The act of sculpting involves removing material from whatever medium you're working with, such as wood or stone. But a wooden sculpture couldn't exist unless a living tree is first cut down or found. The very act of cutting down a tree to acquire the materials needed to create a wooden sculpture fills some people with anger and disgust, which is far from beautiful. So if filling a space in a beautiful way sometimes involves removing beauty from another, maybe this definition doesn't fit either. Do any of these very smart people have a definition of art they all agree on? In these examples, the word beauty pops up again and again. So can we at least agree that art must be beautiful? Well, no. Because art is about an emotional response to, and a horrific photograph of the horrors of war, to give a very dark example, could easily elicit an emotional response from anyone. Sadness, fear, horror. These are all emotional responses, and because we're feeling emotions, these awful pictures can definitely be described as having emotional power, but could hardly be called beautiful. So beauty isn't a connecting theme either. Defining art seems harder than everyone first thought. Is there anything that people agree on when it comes to the question of what is art? 
Again, kind of. The one common factor all these opinions share on what is and is not art seems to be emotion. Almost everyone agrees that art is emotional. Aha, now maybe we have a linking word. So art is emotional. It seems all descriptions of art have that in common at least, the emotional reaction of the viewer. Someone experiencing art has some level of an emotional response. Whoever experiences art feels something. But even that has limitations, because what is emotional to you may not be emotional to me. Does that mean one of us is experiencing art wrongly? If we both look at the same thing and feel different emotions, does that mean this thing isn't art? Or does it mean one of us isn't fully able to appreciate the art within the thing? Does art need to have an equal emotional effect on everyone? Of course not. What affects you may not affect me. A photo of your family means more to you than it does to me, no matter how nice the photo is, because you've got emotional connection to it and I haven't. Speaking of emotional responses, some people get angry at modern art for being so simple, and in their minds, stupid. People say, that's not art, it's just some colour on a canvas, how is that art? The irony of this being, those colours on canvas are making some people very angry, which is an emotional response, and thus are indeed, whether you like it or not, art. So maybe that's what we can define art as, anything that gives anyone in the world an emotional response. And by applying that definition to art, we are able to narrow down what is art to the simple answer of literally everything. That's right, absolutely everything is art. Literally everything. Look at the most boring thing in your room, maybe a lamp, the door, the paint on the walls, or a carpet, a blank book, a desk. Choose any single thing and then realise that's art. Why? Well, because someone had to design it, someone had to make it, and someone probably spent hours trying to make it work as it was meant to, and these people will hold either positive or negative emotions toward that thing, whatever it may be. Maybe some poor intern had to come into work on his day off just to fix the machine that was meant to make it as it broke for the tenth time that week, or maybe it was the first creative work of a new artist, and they're still immensely proud of it. If you were to show that thing to anyone involved in its creation or production, they'd have an emotional response, for better or worse. So yes, that thing is art. Maybe not to you or me, but to someone, it is a thing that evoked an emotional response, and thus, art. So we've managed to define one of the two words, art. Art is everything, everything is art. Now on to the next word, worth. Let's head straight to the dictionary and we find out that worth has four definitions, two as an adjective and two as a noun. Adjective 1, equivalent in value to the sum or item specified. Adjective 2, sufficiently good, important or interesting to be treated or regarded in the way specified. Noun 1, the level at which someone or something deserves to be valued or rated. And noun 2, the amount that could be achieved or produced in a specific time. So worth has four definitions. Great. One relating to monetary value, one about mental or emotional value, and two about potential and usefulness to an individual or company. Let's look at all of these in order and work out which one best fits into our original question. As the dictionary has pointed out, we can have monetary worth, emotional and mental worth, or company and individual related worth. But do these values stay consistent over time and across people? And do they have a base standard by which we can judge them? Well, we're going to need to look at an example scenario and apply all of these types of worth to it. So let's take the simple example of a bottle of water. I can go to the shop and buy a bottle of water for one pound, giving this bottle a monetary value of one pound. Done. We have the worth of this water. It is one pound and will never ever change. Surely that's correct. Well, not all the time. If it was a scorching hot day and I happened to be at a festival, it's likely this water would cost me four or five pounds. The item itself hasn't changed, but the monetary value assigned to it has. So the monetary worth of an item is assigned to it by whoever has the item. But even that has flaws. If I own the water bottle and I decide to sell it for a million pounds, does that mean it's worth one million pounds? Well, I own the bottle and I've said it's worth a million, so yes, it does. Of course, no one would be willing to pay my asking price. So the question now is, if no one is willing to pay the price of an item, does the value change? If no one buys it, we have no proof anyone is willing to part with a million pounds for it, and thus its value is a number I assigned it 
and nobody else agreed with. Maybe for monetary value to be considered real, it has to have both a seller willing to sell and a buyer willing to buy. So monetary value isn't the greatest measure of worth because it's changeable and is set by a union of whoever sells it and whoever buys it, but it's not a defined constant number. We can't use it as a measuring point if it's always changing. How about emotional worth? To me, that might just be another bottle of water, but what if it's the very first unit of stock a new shop bought? The proud shop owner ready to start his life as a businessman, and this bottle of water marks the start of his new business life. Would that shop owner have a different emotional connection to that bottle to, say, me or you? Likely, yes. I know several entrepreneurs who kept their first unit of stock for emotional reasons, or who kept their first pound they made by selling the stock, because it means something to them. It's emotionally valuable. What if that bottle had a competition on the side to win something, and I won? Would I want to keep the bottle as a memento of my little victory? Well, maybe not the whole bottle, but I'd probably peel the label off and keep that, because now it has an emotional connection to an event in my life. But to anyone else, it's just a label. No emotional worth at all. So emotional worth isn't a great measuring system either, as it's too personal, and any measuring system that varies from person to person won't have a standard accepted unit. So are there any other types of worth? How about how much do I need the item? Let's call this usefulness. If I'm sitting down to have my dinner and I've got my food and drink already next to me, that water bottle probably doesn't matter too much to me. But if I were trapped in the desert and haven't drank in hours, now that bottle is essential to my survival. The item hasn't changed, but the situation and its value to me has. Being in this situation, the water bottle is now more important than it was before because I need it to not die. I'm not emotionally attached to it because I don't care which bottle it is or how it gets to me. All I care about now is I physically need it to live. It's an essential factor in me surviving. Right now, it's literally worth my life. So that doesn't work either. It seems every type of worth any item could have is a constantly changing variable. But maybe, even with this being the case, we can still answer the original question. We've established that art is anything. A painting, a book, a bottle, a carpet, a video, a song, a person, a location, literally anything that can create an emotional response in any single human being, we can consider art. And worth is a constantly changing and shifting thing based on rarity, emotional connection, and need. So let's try and answer the question. How much is art worth? Art, which is anything, is worth whatever value you decide to give it. How much is this painting worth? Well, if no one is willing to pay anything, its monetary value may be zero. But to you, the artist, it's worth all the fun and enjoyment you had painting it. Or it's worth the hatred you now feel because nobody wants to buy it. If you have a great memory of a certain location, a holiday you took as a child, or a yearly meeting you and some friends always make time for, the location itself is a powerful emotional work of art, and it's worth whatever time you're willing to give it, and whatever money you're willing to spend to get there. Ultimately, art is everything we can possibly experience, from physical things to emotional connection, and even imagination itself. And the value of each experience is constantly changing based on so many factors. It's impossible to assign any one of them as the standard. How much is art worth? It's worth whatever it's worth to you and always will be. Thanks for watching.